Hello everyone. This is a recap of my live stream from yesterday, creating fodder for collage and mixed media. This is going to be just a show and tell of what I did. If you want to see more of the demonstration, more of the process, you can go look at the live stream. So to make it short and sweet, I'm just going to go down my list of things that I went over in my stream yesterday. First thing is using stuff that we have. Let's not go buy stuff. We've got plenty of papers and stamps and just stuff around. We need to start using our stuff. So grab your rubber stamps. Rubber stamps make a great focal point for collage and mixed media. We have the stamps. We bought the stamps. We forget to use them. Well, I forget to use mine. I like to stamp on different texts. I like to stamp on security envelope patterns. I do like to stamp on just regular paper. And then what I like to do is color the images in color pencil or with crayon, pens. I do color stuff in with a little bit of watercolor. And this is just children's watercolor. Nothing expensive, nothing fancy, just a little bit of color added to the stamped image. I can cut this out, I can tear it out, I can use it just as it is, just a little bit of color. I can add more than one color. I can make it unique, I can make it different, I can make it my own. So grab your rubber stamps. Another thing I like to do is use pattern stamps. You can see this is not perfect. There's gaps. They're not straight. They're not, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect piece of scrapbook paper like you would find. This is unique. This is different. I cannot do this the same two times in a row. So it's unique to me. It's, I can use the same stamp a million times and never come up with the same thing. I can use different colors. I can really overlap everything. I can use this just as it is, or I can add watercolor on top of, and I probably should have done it in black so I could actually see the stamping, but it makes it unique. It's a little bit different, okay? And it's okay. It's okay that it's not perfect. Imperfect is the new perfect. I am going for things that are different, things that are unique, things that only I have done once. I am a recovering perfectionist. I want everything to be exactly the way I want it. So I am now trying to switch my brain over to the imperfect. I embrace I am embracing the imperfection and I like it to be different, unique to each time I do it. So Stamping, you can even make pa patterns from focal image points, um, stamps. It's interesting, it's different, it's unexpected. Um, I may wanna add a little bit of color to that. It's, it's fun, you know, you never know what you're gonna come up with. When you sit down and you're not sure exactly what you wanna do for the day, you know, grab some stamps, start stamping, grab some watercolors, put some color to some page, you know, and have some fun with it. So creating fodder, that is a lot of, uh, a number one thing that I like to do is just grab stamps and make focal images. Another thing, I just like to make painted paper, rip it up into little bits and use that as fodder. So this one is just a bunch of stamped images. Layering is the key. Keep putting things on top of things. I stamped this with many of my handmade stamps, these, and also the Fun Foam stamps that I have made. You can find the videos for those in my playlist, Making Stamps. But I used probably five, I'm counting five, different stamps that I used for this just layering on top of each other, using different stamps, using different colors, different types of inks. It made it very interesting. And then on top of that, I splattered some watercolor. 
I dripped some very wet, very juicy watercolor and then let it drip to create all these lines. Set it aside, let it dry, and look at all those little dots and lines and random little bits of color. I could not reproduce this if I tried, but it ended up to be a very cool piece of paper that I will be using in collage. A different way to go about doing the same thing is to take, this is just a piece of copy paper, 20 pound copy paper. Take your watercolors, and I am just using a children's watercolor. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive, just something that will add some color. I'm taking a little bit of color. I like to use the same color family, so I'm not creating mud. I use things that are usually right next to each other red and orange, green and blue, blue and purple. So I just added a bunch of watercolor, I let it dry, and then I started stamping stamps on top in different colors, different stamps. The wavy lines here are fun foam. I use these to, these patterned fun foams to stamp with. I like to use Distress inks, I ink it up, spray a little bit of mist of water on it, and stamp with it. And look at these wonderful lines that it creates. You can find the fun foam at the Dollar Tree with different shapes in it. All right? I love using them. I love the way it turns out. Do it in different colors. You know, layer it up. It's the key. Layer, layer, layer. Another thing that I like to use for stamps, and I have an example somewhere, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but these silicon, I guess they're trivets or pot holders or whatever, they've got these great patterns. They stamp out really well and create a really wonderful um, pattern on your papers. So I use those as well. Um, making your own stencils. I used a paper punch, stenciled, or paper punched these stars through a, um, what do you call this, flashcard. I've got my very own unique to me stencil, and I used that to stencil on the paper. I also make stencils by folding up papers like a snowflake. This one's square, but, you know, you fold it. And then you cut the shapes out, and then you have got a unique stencil. I also do it with full-paged um, magazine images. I will accordion fold them into strips, use a paper punch or even just a regular hole punch, cut shapes out however you want to do that, and then when you unfold it, you've got your own unique stencil. I have a video how I do these um, it's in one of the playlists as well. Very easy to do. I also use found stencils. This is drywall tape. I use a little bit of an ink pad with a makeup sponge and make stencil through, makes these dots. It makes a wonderful pattern, all right? Um, and also I do use, this is a fly swatter, but any stencil will do. I like to draw, use a pen or a marker of some sort, and just draw inside the shapes and put that on my paper. It adds a little bit of interest. It layers things up a little bit. So when I am using that kind of thing, you can see this is where I stenciled this. That's all it is. It's a bit of stenciling through a paper, handmade paper stencil. Fun stuff. This one I did the same thing and I used a watercolor pencil and outlined around. Took a baby wipe to soften up those edges. Here's the star stencil with a little bit of ink. Not very hard to do, but it makes a very cool, unique to you piece of paper. 
I also use the watercolor on bubble wrap. Just paint a little bit of watercolor on the bubble wrap, put it on. It creates really fun patterns. Nice to do. Um, all right, so moving along. Another thing that I like to do is make circles. Love to make circles. You know I've, I've, I make circles all the time. I use a template that's got different sizes so I can make different size circles. Just using a pen. I like the way that looks. I tear that up and use it in my collage. These circles were made with an Elegant Writer calligraphy pen. It's black. I don't know what kind of formula they use for their ink, but all I did was make some circles in black, spritz it with plain water, and all this wonderful color comes out of the ink. It bleeds. It, uh, it moves. It does all kinds of fun stuff. If you put a lot of water on it, you can let it um, drip. Let it dry, and you've got an interesting, one-of-a-kind, unique piece of collage fodder. When I do my collage fodders, I like to let them dry. I rip them up. So this is a circle one. I used a little bit of watercolor pencil there, used a baby wipe to soften up the edges, watercolored inside the circle shape, used some marker, some Sharpie, some pen. It was a book page. I ripped it all up. Now I've got pieces of collage fodder ready to go. Love doing that. And another the last thing that I was doing was doing crayon rubbings. And what I do is I love flip flops. I love the bottoms of shoes. Go to your closet, go look at your shoes, see if you've got any cool patterns. All you need to do is put a piece of paper down, get a wax crayon, rub the pattern onto a piece of paper. You'll end up with something like that. To add a little bit more interest, put a little bit of watercolor over the rubbing. The crayon is wax. It is a resist. It does not allow the watercolor to get to the paper in that spot. The trick of this is if you want, you want high contrast. If you're doing your crayon in a light color, you can even use white. Use a dark color, watercolor over it. Contrast it so that you can see what's going on. If you use a dark crayon, use a light color um, watercolor so you can see. If you use red on top of red, you're not going to be able to really see the pattern. But it's really a cool pattern. It's nice. It's unique. It's different. And when I do the rubbing, I move my paper around so it's not exactly, you know, the same in all places. Another thing that I like to do with crayon rubbing, rub on a Lego block. Rub on your stencils. This is a fly swatter. Rub, rub markings on, uh, from a crayon. This is Lego. Here is the fly swatter. A little bit of watercolor over the top. It creates a cool piece of paper. When that dries, I'm going to rip it up and have a, a really cool collage fodder that's unique to me that only I will have. Um, that is my major thing. I want unique, one of a kind kinds of fodder for my collage pages or my art journal pages. I want everything to be, you know, strictly my own. It is my own style. It is, you know, something that I made and didn't buy. No one else has this. I am going for imperfect. I, you know, I don't want a perfect stenciling. I want it to be smudged in one place and, you know, a little blurry on another place. 
I want the color to be, you know, varied and different. And I want to make sure that I can't do this again. So it is unique to this piece of paper. No one else will ever be able to make a piece of paper that looks exactly like this. Imperfect is the new perfect in my world. All right, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for imperfection. So that's it. If you want to see how I did these papers, you want to see more of the detail of the process, go ahead and go look at my live stream. You can fast forward through anything that you know you've seen before. It's, it's all there except for this one. I did this one earlier and the video didn't turn out. But anyway. <laughs> They're, they're all there. They're all there. You can see how I made them, the process, how easy it is, how fast it is, how much fun it can be. So that's just a, a quick little recap. Thanks for watching.